Hello, Archie Dunlop here with Talking Astrology with Archie on Friday, August the 4th, 2023. Happy birthday, Barack Obama. Yes, he is 62 today and I want to look at his horoscope. Um, I want to also consider um, the disappearance and death of his chef, um, Taffery Campbell, who died recently in a drowning accident. So I don't have a horoscope for Taffery Campbell. I couldn't find um, a consistent date. I, th I think I found two dates, but they were two days apart, so I'm not going to look at his chart. Um, but in terms of Barack Obama's chart, um, there was something going on involving Neptune, um, and I do want to uh, I do want to consider that. I also want to look at Barack Obama's chart from a perspective of him being a former president. You know what what makes him special? What made him special? What allowed him to get to the White House? So I do want to consider all of that. But before I do that, I want to consider the positions of the planets today. Today being Friday, August the fourth, twenty twenty three. So um, here you go. Um, one of the main things happening is that there is a conjunction between the Moon and Neptune. You know, this conjunction is not completely exact. Of course, it depends where you are, you know, whether you're in um, Australia or Europe or the United States. But, you know, the Moon and Neptune are close together. And so when you have the Moon and Neptune close together in Pisces, there's plenty of scope for confusion, lots of mixed signals, emotions going all over the place. It may be difficult to read people. Um, you know, we might be seeing people like uh, through a cloud. So there is plenty of scope there for deception. Also, the moon is making a sextile aspect to Uranus. Now, sextile aspects are generally quite fortunate. Moon Uranus aspects are about maybe surprises, um, something suddenly happening, uh, the pace of life, particularly on an emotional level, suddenly increasing. Um, so there's no reason why it should be um, a boring day. I mean, um, in a in a gentle way, you know, we can relate to each other on a perhaps on a social level, um, do things that are interesting. Um, yeah, and a few surprises, but we're talking about, um, you know, fairly gentle surprises. They're probably um, the most important aspect of the day is a sesquiquadrate um, between the Sun and Neptune. Now, astrologers often don't use sesquiquadrates because they're not easy to spot by eye. Um, so, you know, can you really, you can see, OK, you can see that the moon is sextile Uranus because the moon is at 23 Pisces, Uranus is at 22 Taurus, easy to spot. Yet the sun, sesquiquadrate Neptune, not so easy to spot um, because they don't share the same degree. But in fact, sun and, and Neptune, they are pretty close to 135 degrees apart. And 135 degrees is um, three times 45. So it's three eighths of the circle. So if you've got a cake cut into eight equal bits, um, 135 degrees would be three, would be three slices, three out of eight slices. And so when you have Sun, sesquiquadrate, Neptune, there is scope there for, for confusion. Um, it's kind of kind of amplifies what I just said about the moon conjunct Neptune, but possibly in an even stronger way, because the sun is about how we want to establish ourselves. Uh, this is about our identity, yet it's sesquiquadrate Neptune. So it may not be so easy. Um, it may not be so easy to get our message across. Um, you know, the clouds of confusion um, are all around us. So um, if you want to do something very definite today, um, be warned. It just might not work out. Um, it might not work out as expected. And in terms of relationships, you know, be careful because, uh, you know, it may be, may be really difficult to create 
the right impression. And at the same time, um, there may be a sense of uh, delusion, um, getting a wrong idea uh, about what's going on, perhaps, between you and someone else. So I would suggest uh, you have to be careful when listening to your feelings. Yeah, your feelings are picking up a lot. You know, there's a, it's the Moon-Neptune conjunction in Pisces, um, the sun sesquicquadrate quadrate neptune Yeah, there's a lot of emotional information going around, which in one sense is good if we can filter it properly. But I think many of us are going to find it difficult to filter the emotional radio waves properly. Um, they might get scrambled, confused, and we might come to the come to a completely wrong conclusion. So that's the overall picture today. A bit of caution um, is required. You know, I should, you know, with that sun, sesquic, quadrate, Neptune, you know, sun is in Leo. Leo is very definite. Very, Leo wants to, um, wants to establish itself, its ego, it's a fixed sign. But then that sesquic, quadrate, Neptune, it all, it all becomes very chaotic. So be careful there. Now, as far as my forecasts for the day ahead are concerned, they do reflect um, this confusion I have been talking about. So here we go. Here are my forecasts for Friday, August the 4th, 2023. Aries, you understand that explaining human, human behaviour is never easy and attributing blame can be a fool's errand. The events you experience indeed have multiple causations and in an ideal world will move beyond the blame game. But in the confusion, there is an opportunity, perhaps of a financial nature, which in the next few days you can take full advantage of. Taurus, you're in a position to make things happen, particularly on a social level. So it's important that you don't underestimate yourself. Your words and actions can create ripples or even shockwaves. So consider what you want and how you can achieve it. Yet bear in mind that some of your friends are unreliable. Gemini. Geminis can be difficult to understand and it sometimes seems that they are two people in the same body. And today, with the moon making a conjunction to Neptune, you are particularly confusing and your motives aren't at all clear. Yet, deep down, you know exactly what you are doing. And if you stick to your path through rain and fog, you'll reach your destination. Cancer. Whether or not it is a good day rather depends on your approach. If you focus on money and material things, you might be disappointed. But if you prioritise the spiritual and creative, then you can reach new heights of inspiration. And what you feel with your Cancerian senses is the overall vibe permeating humanity right now in early August. Leo, the sun, your ruler, is making an 135 degree aspect to Neptune. As a result, there's plenty of scope for confusion and your efforts to get results could run aground. And if you think you understand something, then think again. And perhaps what is happening is that you are being encouraged to let go of the inflexibility often associated with your star sign. Virgo, you have to think carefully about other people and how you treat them. This is because you can't rely on surface appearances. What you see is not what you get and promises, however sincere, could turn out to be BS. No, you have to rely on yourself and not believe things until you have done careful research. Libra. It's a day when boundaries are weak. These boundaries you create for yourself are often encroached and it is more about confusion than actual disrespect. As a Libran, your inclination is to say nothing, 
but the best approach might be to gently remind the people around you what's acceptable and what's not. Scorpio. In general, it's a time of year when you can be successful, but there'll be the occasional hiccup. And today, with the sun making a hard aspect to Neptune, you may run into some difficulty. What you thought was true might actually be a lie, and you might have to reconsider your plans. Sagittarius, look around your home and ask yourself what might go wrong. I say this because, you know, not because things necessarily will go wrong, but because with the moon conjunct Neptune, vigilance really matters. And be particularly careful with anything connected with water. Don't leave running taps unattended and leave plumbing jobs for the experts. Capricorn. Don't underestimate other people's sensitivity. You might believe that no one knows what you are thinking, but you're leaking information through your body language and the pattern of your speech. And consider the possibility that someone has telepathic abilities. But don't worry, secrecy is probably not as important as you'd imagined. Aquarius. Financial matters need to be treated with a certain amount of caution. You don't know all the facts and some of your, it, some of your assumptions may be incorrect. Yet you may have a sudden inspiration about a new way of making money. In its raw form, the idea might be crazy. Um, but if you work on the idea over the coming days and weeks, you may have a gem on your hands. Pisces, right now you're a hard person to deal with. You're difficult to make out and the things you say could be misleading. Is this the impression you want to give? If not, then maybe you should make a special effort to be clear and to the point. One person in particular may find you impossible to deal with. So let's now move on to the I Ching. And uh, as always, I threw three coins in the air and I asked the question, what is Friday going to be like for visitors to my YouTube channel? So the first hexagram I threw was hexagram number 62, the preponderance of the small. So the advice here is to be quite modest um, in your aims. Don't, don't try to take on too much. Be satisfied with very small gains, almost incremental gains, because if you take on too much, um, you're going to overwhelm yourself. You can actually kind of see this in the hexagram. You know, if you like, this is the load in the middle, those two unbroken lines. And these are kind of the, the handles, if you can make that out. So the idea is that you have long handles, a, a quite a big frame to to um, to pick up this load. And this load is not should not be too large because if it, if you do take on too much, um, it's going to go wrong. And yeah, in in terms of what this thing is, I mean, you know what it is. You know what this thing you're trying to deal with is. If you um, if you use too much force, it's just going to go. It's going to go badly wrong. So just bear that bear that in mind. Um, and I think you might realise at a certain stage that you can't do it on your own. Uh, you might need to bring in helpers. But even then, that might not be enough because this hexagram moves to hexagram number hexagram number 39, which is obstruction. So short term, whatever this thing you're trying to sort out is, um, you're not going to sort it out. You're not going to, I don't think you're going to sort it out today. Even if you get outside help, um, you, you've got to have um, a longer term time frame, maybe tomorrow, next week. So be patient and um, muster your resources. So I now want to look at the horoscope of Barack Obama, whose birthday it is today. Um, so let's uh, let's see what's going on with Barack Obama. Um, 
I mean, really, I'm not really making great predictions for Barack Obama. I'm more considering the issue of, you know, how he got to be president. Um, that's his uh, relocated uh, chart. So Barack Obama, um, there we go. There's his natal chart. So, OK, Barack Obama is a Leo. Um, the sun works very well in Leo. The sun rules Leo. Um, but, you know, lots of people are Leo and they never become a president. Yes, Leo is a royal sign. So, yes, um, there's his son in Leo in the sixth house. Um, not a very sort of spectacular house, uh, the sixth house. It's more about duty and service. You'll notice that his son is towards the... Um, the western part of his horoscope. His north node is towards the western part of his horoscope um, because he's a god Aquarius rising, which is the opposite sign to the sun. So his, his life ideally should be one of service. Okay, you can still be president and have a life of service, um, but that's what, it, that's what it's all about. Um, living his life to an extent through other people being reliant on other people's support and patronage. Um, maybe this is telling us how he became president. You know, you th we think that, you know, he's a Leo, he's doing it all himself. But I think there's, um, there's a lot of support behind the scenes. That is, I think, the secret, that I think is to a great extent um, the secret of his, of his success. Um, also, um, he's got the moon in Gemini, um, conjunct, the, uh, conjunct the IC. Um, someone who wrote, who writes a lot. Uh, he's a great communicator. Um, he's, he's a good orator. Okay, he might not be a spectacular orator, but he's certainly a competent orator. Um, he writes a lot. He communicates well. Um, the moon is sort of applying to a wide sex style with the sun. So I think the moon, the sun moon relationship in his chart, um, in his chart, uh, I think, um, looks good. Um, but what about, you know, what about that, the magic, um, the magic that pro propelled him to the White House? Um, okay. Um, he does have sun on the Venus Mars midpoint. Um, you can see that there's his Venus in Cancer. Um, there's his Mars at, in um, in 22 Virgo, and his Sun is exactly halfway between between Venus and Mars. So you know Venus and Mars are about as a pair, as I keep saying, they you know, they are about sexuality and charisma. And so if you've got the Sun on the Venus Mars midpoint, um, you you can have a great deal of a great deal of charisma. Um, so I think um, I think that uh, that must have helped. I don't think that this chart on its own, just by looking at it like this, explains how he got to, how he, how he got to the White House when he got to the White House. And I think that's the important point with astrology. It's not it's not just about being a lucky person. Uh, um, born with luck, born with the ability to be president. Um, it's about getting the moment right. You, you know, the the moment um, in time when your luck is a ma is at a maximum. And I will be looking looking at looking at that shortly. Um, but probably what people are thinking out thinking about at the moment is the fact that his um, his chef um, Taffery Campbell drowned uh, in Martha Martha's Vineyard. So what was that all about? Um, as I said, I don't have Taffery Campbell's horoscope. I mean, I looked online. I saw some, one source said he was born on the 10th of March, 1978. Another source said 12th of March, 1978. The fact I had two different dates means that, I don't know, I, I'm not going to speculate by putting up a chart for him. Um, but here is the horoscope for his disappearance. Again, I don't find, uh, you know, I don't find this chart particularly interesting. But one thing I do want to consider in his disappearance chart is the position of Neptune. Neptune is the planet of water. It's often connected with drowning. And um, this, uh, this Neptune is at 2733 Pisces. Okay, so what? <laughs> 
So what? Well, okay, let's go back to, Bar remember, 2733 Pisces. Go back to Barack Obama's chart, and he's got the sun at 1233 Pisces, right? 1233 Pisces. Um, and um, go back to a disappearance chart. Neptune at 2733. This, I think, was a bit... He was found two days later. Twenty seven. So, in other words, Neptune on the day was exactly, exactly sesquiquadrate um, Barack Obama's son. Um, that is, I suppose, perfect symbolism. Um, also, Barack Obama has the son in the sixth house. Um, the sixth house... Um, represents um, duty, uh, obligation. Um, in Indian astrology, um, the sixth house represents servants. Um, and so in a way, this man, uh, Taffrey Campbell, was a, I mean, I don't mean this in a, um, he was a chef. He was, um, he was, he was, you know, formerly he was in the White House staff. And so once having a son in the sixth house and Neptune sesquiquadrate um, the sun is really perfect symbolization, a perfect symbolism for um, the drowning of of a of a male of one's male chef. That that fits perfectly. Sun being a male planet, absolute absolutely fits perfectly. Um, now, if one was um, looking at this event beforehand. Would I have predicted that his chef would have drowned? No, I, I don't think so. I mean, that was, that's just so far-fetched. But um, the symbolism, the, sim the symbolism is completely there. Um, but we also have to ask, what does that mean for Obama? Is this just a one-off event for him? Or maybe not. Um, maybe this is a reflection of what's going on in his life. You know, Neptune is um, Neptune is sesquiquadrate his son, so he's perhaps he's under pressure in some way. He's there's plenty of scope for Barack Obama to get confused. I I sincerely hope that Barack Obama is not advising people politically because I'm not convinced that right now Barack Obama's political judgment is um, is particularly good, um, and. Um, I think this is reflected in Barack Obama's solar return. This is this is the this is the chart for when the sun returns to where it was when you were born. Um, so let's let's look at Barack Obama, Obama's solar return for 2023. Um, here it is. Now I've set this for Honolulu, where he was born. Now some people might would say no, no, no. You've got to set it for where he's living. That. But I am absolutely adamant that the, that the most important solar return chart is for where you were born, because you cannot escape your fate by just moving somewhere else. But, you know, we can argue about that. Um, it's a point of discussion. But in his solar return, um, he has got Uranus on the IC. Now, you might say that a solar return could act retrospectively. Could it be that his solar return on August the 4th was forecasting the drowning of the chef um, a couple of weeks beforehand? Is that possible? Can time work backwards? I'm not saying that is the case, um, but it's just a, just a possibility, just something to think about. Um, but Uranus is on the IC. He's got Sun on the Descendant. I'm thinking that this could be quite quite a, a difficult year for him. It could be quite um, quite destabilizing. Uh, I don't know why. Um, it may just be the events he's living under as a former president. These events are perhaps more important than if you're an ordinary person. Plus, he's got the sun on the the sun on the sun on the. Uh, I see. Okay, so this chart kind of reflects his own natal chart because he's got, you know, if you if you just have a look at Barack Obama's natal chart, he's got Uranus rising, Sun close to the descendant, um, and there, and he's he's also got Uranus. He's got Uranus on a descendant. So this um, Barack Obama's um, solar return sort of reflects. 
um, some of the symbolism um, in his natal chart. So um, I think uh, I think he needs to be careful. Um, I think he needs to sort out and make sure his security is all in order. Um, I I think um, I, th I I think this year could be could be turbulent. You know, I'm thinking. Well, he's not president anymore, so you know things should be quieter. You know, he should have a quieter life, but. He should avoid getting involved in politics. He should involve, you know, perhaps avoid um, sort of advising people. Now, I want to ask this question: How did it? How did it happen that he got to be president? You know, I don't think his natal chart is completely spectacular. I don't think it's got "president" written all over it. Um, but, um, uh, but I think looking at his his Indian horoscope is 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 perhaps more um, more informative. You know, the Indian astrology in Indian astrology tends to be more fated. You know, when Indian astrology works, it really works very well. But um, the trouble is, Indian astrology is hard, um, and one can get Indian astrology really wrong. Um, when it goes wrong, it goes badly wrong. Um, uh, so let's let's look at his um, Indian chart, uh, his Vedic chart. So uh, this, yeah, this chart had presidency, did had kind of had presidency written um, all over it. So this chart, you know, it uses the sidereal zodiac. So the signs, you know, go back. So in his Indian chart, he is a. Um, you can see he's a Cancerian in his in his Indian in his Indian horoscope. So everything everything goes back, and this is his first house, um, and you can see that he's got Jupiter. He's got a Jupiter Saturn conjunction on his ascendant, and um, where I think some astrologers might have gone wrong in say two thousand and eight in the run up to his. Um, the presidential election was Jupiter. Now, on the surface, his Jupiter looks as if it's really badly placed. Um, you can see he's got Jupiter in Capricorn. Um, Jupiter is in its fall. It's fallen in Capricorn. Um, doesn't work well in Capricorn. I mean, in the Western chart, you know, look at poor Prince Harry. Okay, he's okay in, in the East. He's got um, his Jupiter's in Sagittarius, but poor Harry with his his Jupiter in Capricorn in the Western Western Zodiac, you know that uh, that explains so much. But anyway, um, I'll talk. I, I've already talked about that. But uh, yeah, this Jupiter in Capricorn for um, Obama is um, not good, apparently, um, and it's conjunct Saturn, strong Saturn in Capricorn. So on the surface, looks bad, and then we look at his dashes. Uh, so in 1996, these are the periods that we, in, in astrology, we go through nine periods in, 100, in our life. If we live to 120, 120, then we'll go through all nine periods. And in 1996, he entered his Jupiter Dasha, and he stayed in his Jupiter Dasha until 2012. So on a surface, you might think, oh, this, Ju this period of his life could be really difficult. But, um, oh, and even and it, you, you, in, you know, Jupiter looks even weaker because it's um, using this in Indian astrology. There's this system called Shad Bala, which is six forms of strength. And his Jupiter has got is a weak, apparently the weakest planet in his chart. So you might be thinking, yeah, his Jupiter's really bad, but he has something called a Nietzsche Banga Raja Yoga. And what a Nietzsche Banga Raja Yoga is, is that if you've got, if, I, if I've got this right, it's if a planet is debilitated and it is conjunct, um, the, the ruler of the sign it is in, um, then it is actually strengthened. Um, I mean, this, this program I've got gives sort of definitions of... Um, the Nietzsche, Nietzsche Banga Raj Yoga. So what this program says, um, the debilitated planet is associated with or aspected by its debilitation lord. 
This yoga indicates cancellation of the state of debilitation of a planet and yielding benefic results instead, being elevated to a Raja Yoga status. And so Jupiter's in Capricorn, debilitated in Capricorn. The ruler of Capricorn is Saturn and Jupiter is conjunct Saturn. And as a result of this Nietzsche Banga Raja Yoga, the position of Jupiter moves from being completely disastrous to being completely brilliant. And, you know, that is why um, Indian astrology can really do your head in sometimes. And sure enough, this Jupiter, this Jupiter period starting in 1996, you know, was his ascent um, go, go, going through Chicago politics, the Senate, and then in the end getting to, pres getting to the presidency. Really, nothing could stop him. So, I think that's that that really really shows, and you'll see that the key period when he when he um, got to the presidency between November two thousand and seven and March two thousand and nine, he was in the Moon sub period of Jupiter, and again his Moon is really well placed. It's in the fifth house. You know, the Purva Punya has, so the word past life credit, um, as favorable aspect by Jupiter from, from Jupiter. So this was his moment. And so it wasn't the fact that his, in terms of his Western chart, you know, we just I didn't think his chart was great, but I mean, it was okay. But his Indian chart, you know, really showed that this was his moment. Uh, that that period when he when he stood for the stood for when he stood to be president it was arguably the luckiest was the luckiest few years of his whole life so he got his timing absolutely right so before I close I just want to make one final point about Barack Obama I mean so far I, I've um, you know been um, you know tried to be positive why not uh, I've got nothing against Barack Obama. Um, so, um, there's Barack Obama. Now, notice he has Uranus on the seventh house cusp. Um, notice also the United States of America has, has Uranus on, on the seventh house cusp. Okay, his Uranus is not exactly on the seventh house cusp. And Joe Biden, there's Joe Biden. He's got Uranus on the seventh house cusp. Um, so, Uranus on the seventh house cusp is about for a president it's about foreign policy and i think that uranus in the seventh house cusp reminds us um of how disastrous uh barack obama was in a foreign policy angle um he was um if we if we you know if we think about it um his response to the arab spring um when you know, his response to the arab spring you know, encouraging, um, encouraging the, um, the the sort of the breakdown of these, um, you know, these dictatorships, like in like in um, in Syria, in uh, in Libya, was catastrophic. It caused um, a refugee crisis. His support for um, his support for um, uh, opponents of the Assad regime in Syria led, you know, led to. You know, you know, a catastrophic refugee crisis, which in probably led to Brexit. I mean, one of the, you know, Brexit, you know, the Brexit vote in 2016 was really touch and go. But I think it was a fear of refugees from Syria. Um, I think that was what tipped it. If it hadn't been for that, I don't think Britain would have vote, voted for Brexit. Um, then you had what happened in Ukraine, you know, 2014. United States interfering in Ukrainian politics. Um, you had the coup. Uh, you had which led to Russia annexing uh, Crimea. Um, the succession, the secession of um, uh, Luhansk and Donetsk, and that was the precursor to the war in Ukraine that we're having. And so. You know, again, that was on that was on Barack Obama's watch, and I think this is really reflected by his this Uranus in the seventh um, on his descendant. He had the capacity to, you know, he he didn't really know what he was quite know what know what he was doing. Perhaps there were people around him who were just just you know persuading him that this was the right thing to do. Um, 
and I think you know with Uranus on the seventh he was he was creating the he was creating conflict and war and crisis abroad and i th- I think that was that's really the failing of his presidency, and I really think that is reflected um in his um seventh in, by that Uranus in the seventh house and one final chart um I want to do show is the um is his chart relocated for Tripoli in Libya you know Obama regime was re- you know overthrew Gaddafi um and you know it's you know like he tried to try to overthrow Assad in um in um in Syria and there you go relocated for Libya we have Uranus on the first house on the first house cusp so this was a place where um uh, which really suffered because of Obama's um, pr- Obama's presidency. So that's all I'm going to say for today um, about Obama. Um, I uh, I mean I'm I'm not I don't have any sort of great negativity about Obama. Um, I think you know Affordable Care Act was a great thing. Um, he tried his best in. In internal politics in the United States. I mean, I think he was, I mean, his problem was he was a weak politician. He wasn't like uh, Lyndon B. Johnson or who knew how to manipulate the levers of power. I don't think he had the experience to be a really effective president. Um, so anyway, you know, he wasn't, he's not as bad as Biden, probably not as bad as Trump, but uh, pretty uh, mediocre president in my opinion. But nonetheless, I hope he has a um, I hope he has a happy birthday and I will talk to you tomorrow.